There was a huge insider trading scandal with the Federal Reserve. We've been talking about insider trading within Congress, but now we're talking about the Federal Reserve as well. Can you get the audience up to speed on what happened and the resignations that followed as a result? Yeah, so I mean, basically, in in the wake of of COVID, um, as the Fed was was creating four and a half trillion dollars out of nowhere um, in a very short period of time, which is really kind of a magical thing to be able to do. There are no limitations um, in terms of how much the Fed can create or where that money goes or strings attached to it or anything. There's, there's just sort of talk um, around what it's supposed to be doing to fight emergencies and so forth. And in this process, um, a number of Fed officials, um, one of whom resigned, were effectively um, involved in some of the, the, the specific areas um, that were most helped by this abundance of money. Um, and so and, and so was Congress. Um, and, and there's ongoing investigations um, in, in terms of a, a lot of Congress people that, that had to do with the timing specifically um, of not just trading um, or sort of moving their portfolios around relative to just the general um, creation of this extra money that was also you know, streaming into stock markets generally, but also stocks that could have been impacted by by COVID protocol or by by, by COVID emergency funding. Um, and so, you know, it, it's a fine line. In general, um, Congress, I think, should not be um, trading anything. Um, when when they're doing the public's business, I mean they can, they can you know have old potentially investments coming in, but this was not the situation with what was going on. It was it was the appearance and the actuality of trading um, and investing while um, these emergency amounts of money were being created and going into other areas and 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 therefore profiting from them. Um, and 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 to this day, um, it's still okay to do that. It's insane, um, absolutely insane. Uh, the head of the Fed, you know, it, uh, Chairman Powell, did did suggest um, that it would be a good idea for you know people at the Fed not to basically do this. But but there, there was no, um, yeah, you know, as he was. Um, but but you know whether it's active or passive, and and this is this is kind of the the the, the irritation with this entire um, conflict of interest is that it's not about. Oh, I'm about to sign a bill, or I'm about to deliver a bill on the floor, and I'm also positioned in this company. And at the end, I'm going to like cash out because I know this bill is going to, you know, sort of be passed or not, or it's going to be talked about or not. And I'll make money out of it. It's not about that. It's it's about the fact that in general, um, there's a public obligation and there's a private investment side. And when you have a public obligation, um, which you know you've been voted to do, and in the case of the Fed, Jerome Powell and, and Fed members aren't voted by people; they're voted by effectively themselves and and uh, substantiated by Congress. But but they're still involved in in doing quote the public's business, and that should not be private investing on the back of money you can create because the actual public can't go around and say, all right, well we want to just create you know a few trillion dollars of our own to use to invest in the markets. So corporate stock buybacks were already a problem prior to the pandemic. And then you know, more access to that cheap money, I think, put that whole issue on overdrive. And now we're seeing various companies, various banks just be very transparent about how much they plan on even increasing their corporate stock buybacks. What kind of impact does that have on the stock market and the inflation of assets? Because I think it's important for ordinary Americans who might actually have the means, very few of them do relative to the wealthy, have the means to invest their money. But some of these investments are incredibly risky when you really take into consideration how inflated they might be as a result of corporate stock buybacks. As opposed to you know the stock or the shares going up in value because of you know supply and demand and all of that you know it's all disconnected from what we we generally think of as you know economic forces. 
Yeah, that's a good question. And when, when I talk about that, that distortion, that permanent distortion between the real economy and, and the markets, you know, what you're referring to at the, at the end of what you just said is, is the real economy, which, which should be reflected in the actual values of, of stock prices and, and isn't when you have an abundance of cheap money going in and chasing some of those stocks. It's not to say there aren't companies that, that, that should be valued as high as they are based on supply and demand, based on their products, based on their innovation, but, but what it, what it, what it does um, having share buybacks be sort of your um, modus operandi for uh, inflating your own stock effectively because it's cheaper to borrow money at the levels that um, the Fed has prevailing right now and to use that money to buy stock to push your stock up and, and also money flows into stock that's inflating. So if, if, a, if a company launches a big share uh, buyback program because they borrow money in order to do that, it ha- two things happen. One, they potentially get more into debt. That could or could not be a problem depending on the company, but that's just a potential weakness there. Um, but also money chases money, um, right? And, and money doesn't really care where money comes from once it gets into a market environment. And, and that's where the sort of stock inflation can come up. A share buyback is followed by um, yeah, other people, investors, small investors to Wall Street looking at it and saying, okay, well, if they're buying shares, shares are gonna go up. We'll go in and buy shares, they'll go up further because you have all this money flowing into the those companies that are doing that, but but they're not necessarily chasing their own value. So so it creates this distorted effect between um, real and sort of transparent value of a company and and the value that it gets because uh, it has this money sort of chasing its stock price up. Right. And buybacks are, are one one sort of area from which that that money comes. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time and we have to wrap up soon. But I do want to ask one more question, which is for People who want to get involved, who want to organize, who want to look to policy solutions for much of what we're talking about today, where would you direct their attention? Where should the focus be in terms of regulating the system in the very least to maybe do away with this distortion? Um, yeah, so 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 one thing, and I, I mentioned it in my testimony, and it does have to do with the ordinary investor versus the sort of leveraged Wall Street using lots of cheap money um, types of flow that that's been going on, which is which is shareholder rights. Um, and and one of the things that, that I had mentioned was you know a company like BlackRock that owns ten trillion dollars worth of assets or other people's money um, is effectively able to vote those shares. They that means that they can um, basically push corporate policy, which which means they can push what corporates do, corporations do, and, and how they do it, and, and how that impacts their workers and their um, empl- other kinds of employees, and, and a whole chain of other other areas. Whereas actual individual people, if you buy a fund um, or you invest a retirement amount of money in some of these. Um, ETS exchange traded funds as they're called with BlackRock or other big companies, you don't have that right that they just took. Wow. So they're basically using your money to impose their opinion on the corporations that your money is going towards through them. So so one thing that I think is really important um, is for anybody that's invested in any way in the market, whether it's you know extra money, it's your retirement, 401k, whatever, um, is is to, to realize that that money is not, um, is actually getting negatively impacted by this distortion because it's going to help the big players become more powerful and influential over corporate policy. So, so, so that's one thing. I think in general, uh, you know, where do you go? I mean, I, there, there's so many things that need to, to be changed in the system to, to make it a, a less distorted. I, I don't see that happening, which is why I call it a permanent distortion. There's too much money in there that's been fabricated from nothing um, over too long a period of time. Um, but you know, the Fed should have limitations on what it can create, not just you know how it fixes interest rates, but 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 what it buys, how much it buys, how how quickly it creates money, and the accountability that it doesn't have um, in terms of what happens to that money, um, because that's really important. Nine trillion dollars is a substantial chunk, or, or equivalent to a substantial chunk, almost half um, of our GDP. Um, you know, and and this is not just the Fed; this is central banks around the world. So so I think all of those things are are absolutely um, necessary to to be changed. There's more, but but to, to, to pay attention to um, yeah. in the real economy, or or if you are a smaller or sort of other form of participant in in the markets or affected by them, which which we all are. 
Nomi Prinz, absolute pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for being so generous with your time. Everyone, please check out her work. She has, by the way, one of my favorite things to do is to just go on YouTube and look up anything that you've done in terms of interviews, talks, please check that out. Also, her upcoming book is Permanent Distortion, How Financial Markets Abandon the Real Economy Forever. That is due to come out October 11th of this year. And while you're waiting for that to be released, please check out all the president's bankers and collusion. The other two books that were published by Nomi Prince. Nomi, thank you again, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Anna.